left out there, um, that uh, yes, the platforms are two different things, um, but one of the, um, I guess one of the points that's worth uh, mentioning is that the ASICS platform has a lot of hooks built into the software that allows for integration between the two different uh, technologies. And that's sort of a big deal. We have people that dream up all these different ideas and they put um, a roadmap that describes the technology, uh, where we're headed, um, what's here today, where we're going tomorrow, and the emerging technologies. So once in a while we have internal meetings where they described to us um, once in a while, I get to go, but for the most part, um, us as project managers, we're focused on the here and now, let's go, 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 build, build, build. Uh, so we're not really equipped to talk about that, that, but perhaps it might be a good idea to see if we can get somebody in here to talk about the platform that you have in Essex that can describe the, uh, the level of integration that can be achieved, even though they're two different platforms, how you can uh, roam from one platform to the other in terms of voice communications and the integration of the data that's available. So I'll make the offer if you guys want to think about it. Um, I'll, I can reach out to some folks and see who we can bring in to address the board and because at least it will be in the context of what you actually have now, what the overall uh, view and uh, vision for the platform is in terms of the P25 platform um, will give you a better idea. I would fall under your Michelle in operations, you bet. Okay. I'll let you work with her. Okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. Um, we've seen all this before, and I know that Nick mentioned this last time, um, that all the sites in the platform are active and in, in transmitting. Uh, so the overall P24, uh, P25 platform is running. Um, there's two things to keep in mind as I'm highlighting here. Harden um, is an active site um, that we just need to finish up. Um, it's uh, terrain wise, it was very challenging and it's on a steep hill. So when it rains, it's a problem. When it's a snow, it's a problem. So we need to finish up. Uh, there's some landscaping and fencing and uh, some other things with um, uh, mitigation for erosion and water and all that kind of stuff that we've been waiting to uh, complete. So we've been working with the city of Iowa Falls to uh, get the final approval on that so we can go back in there and uh, complete that process. Rock, Rock Rapids is the only site that's not transmitting because it's not built yet. Uh, as I mentioned before, Rock Rapids is a replacement for an existing uh, Iowa Public Television tower. Um, so it's tricky, it's complicated, and uh, we've been working uh, with IPTV um, to approve the overall plan. So we just received preliminary uh, um, construction drawings for the plan this week, so we're looking at it internally, and then we're looking at for, uh, following up with IPTV in the next week. Uh, so that we can get approval and we can actually start actually start digging. Uh, we had uh, uh, a, we have received approval for the preliminary plan, but this the CD is actually a lot more detailed in the amount of information, and that's what we use right before we actually start digging, so that we're all in agreement. It's not a concept anymore. This is what it's going to be. Once that starts, we'll be able to go pretty quickly. But again, this one will be challenging because we have to build a tower, uh, a tall tower next to an existing tower, move everything over, and then tear down the existing tower all without disrupting operations. So it's a very uh, tricky uh, process and it slows us down, but it's what needs to be done. So <clears throat> this map gives you a view of what the coverage for the state looks like. There's two colors on this map. The green color represents mobile coverage, which covers pretty much over 95% of the state. And then there's like a olive color um, that are smaller circles. That's what represents what the portable on street coverage looks like throughout the state. 
So underneath the olive is green, right? Because uh, mobile coverage is always better than portable coverage. Well, what I want you to note is that up there at Rock Rapids, you see a hole in coverage that's because the site isn't there. So this represents today. We're transmitting, all of the sites are transmitting with the exception of Rock Rapids. So in terms of coverage testing, uh, we mentioned, uh, you know, before the end of the year, we did everything that's in green. And um, everything that's in blue wasn't quite available back then. So we, were, we basically caught up to the sites that were available. Then we stopped. And everything that's blue is ready to start immediately. The only thing that's not available yet is up here again, and that's because the Rock Rapid site isn't built. And if you remember the map, these three counties actually have coverage, but we look at how much Rock Rapids provides coverage into those counties as well, which is why we don't test them yet. So for example, in Sioux, uh, one out of the four is Rock Rapids. In O'Brien, one out of three is Rock Rapids. In Osceola, one of the three is Rock Rapids. Um, I think you guys have seen this map, but I do remember having a conversation with Nick about the availability of this information, which we said it would be available. Uh, in particular, uh, I believe it was Han Hancock County. So if you were uh, curious about what Hancock County looked like, uh, these are all the test points within that county. We planned for 1,024 tiles, so we mapped 1,024 tiles. We capture, the capture rate means that out of those, 90.2% 90, 90 um, have a road on it that we can actually drive through. So two, 924 tiles were the tiles that we were actually able to drive through and all of them passed. So when we're all done, we'll be able to provide these, but I, I know there was a question last time, so I just wanted for you to actually be able to see it a little bit more up close. Yes. Just to clarify something, Melvin, on this on this map that you see of Hancock County, there's not a tower in Hancock County, though, is there? No, there's not. Is there? No. So without a tower in the county, Correct. you have that kind of mobile coverage there. Correct. Okay. Because you know, not there's 99 counties. Not every county right. has a tower. Right. Right. All right. So like I said, at the end of the day, when we're done, we'll be able to provide this. And that will give you plenty of information if you have a particular county that we can provide. All right, summary. Uh, so obviously, we need a complete hardened in Rock Rapids. So I'm looking at, at both of those starting in the near future. Um, Given the recent events, I'm pretty sure everything is mush right now, so we'll probably have to oh, wait for a yeah, dry yeah, out. <laughs> now that the snow is melting, I'm almost wishing for it to freeze so we can actually start, because otherwise, uh, I've been going to some of the sites and I had to go and get some rubber boots because it's been kind of messy out there. Uh, coverage, again, we just need to restart it. Uh, we're ready to go. As you saw, all the counties are ready with the exception of those four for Rock Rapids. Logging integration um, was a bit of a complicated thing, but we got that going. Um, so all the loggers uh, for DPS are integrated together via DPS network, but also via our network as well. And the reason that's complicated is because there's a, a lot of cross archiving that takes place throughout the network. And there was a lot of configuration that needed to take place. The other piece is uh, Nick had mentioned before we were starting that process of um, integrating the dispatch centers. Well, we've completed that process for all the DPS dispatch centers. So now um, the DPS dispatch centers have access to the new platform, but to access their leg legacy resources. So I so, wanted to explain this a little bit. Well, I was going to say, make sure you explain that. That's right. <laughs> so here's this beautiful diagram. So the ISIX cloud is the ISIX network, right? DPS dispatch sites, here I'm just showing one, but they're scattered throughout the state. 
they are, are part with the MCC 7500, they're part of an integrated solution that connects into the ISIX network. So the dispatch centers by default have access to all the tower sites that are part of ISIX, okay? But in addition to that, <clears throat> these dispatch centers have access to all the legacy DPS uh, towers, which is what I'm showing here. So on this side, right, this is all the VHF, all the conventional stuff. The new equipment has access to this, so DPS continues operations over here. But at the same time, because it's all attached, they have access to all of the tower sites. They're not having gone operational, but it's all integrated. And we did this so that we can continue supporting, so there could be overlap between the two scenarios until we do a final cutover where DPS starts actually using all the tower sites. In which one step further is DPS communications will start patching Leah into the regionals. So mm -hmm. we're the only one that can really do that. So we're going to patch them all. And that's part of your, you'll, you'll know about when we get those control stations in. So the LEA doesn't go away, but it's, it's integrated into ISIX until the circuits completely go away. And then we're confident that the, the that the PSAPs have it strictly with the consulates on the new, that's how it works. That's what's important about this, this diagram about these gateways, because we required them to integrate it into that. All right, going forward, um, we had spoken last time about the uh, core upgrades. So we started that process. Uh, we started a process uh, which starts with uh, auditing all the software and all the hardware that's in the core. It's an automated process, but it's a lengthy process. So it actually started on Monday and it didn't complete until the end of Tuesday. So for two days, we're doing nothing but audits and the core, and then we froze the database on uh, the 13th, which is on Wednesday. So what that means is <clears throat> um, we freeze the database because we have to do a conversion. Uh, the system release uh, that the system is running on right now is what was released when we staged the system now that we're getting close to the end, we have to turn over a system that's at the latest release. Part of that process is freezing the database, converting it to the latest release so it's compatible, and then we dump it back into the cores. So that it doesn't mean that it affects operations. When you freeze the database, all it means is that even if you continue to put radios into the core, the core will take it, we just took a snapshot in time of the database. Once we reinstall it again, whatever you put between the freeze and now goes away. It'll stop working because the new software is not gonna be aware of it. That's why we freeze it and we tell folks, don't make any changes until we come back and we re-enable them. So that started uh, yesterday. And then the database conversion uh, process, um, they, they take the team came in and they take all that stuff back to Schaumburg and they start that on Monday. So for a week, they're gonna be doing all of the conversion process, prepping all the software and whatnot. The week of the 25th is when that, uh, the software gets installed and then the database gets restored into the cores and we do some testing before we cut over to the new system release. So the plan is we do the cutover on the week of 4-1, April 1st. Obviously, this is a very simplified <laughs> version of the steps. There's a lot of stuff that happens in between, but this is the gist of it. Any questions? That's all I had. Congratulations on having a uh, date on the screen. <laughs> I know those are tough to commit to in uh, such a uh, large and complex system, and it's uh, exciting that we're getting close to the point where it's right around the corner. Yep, we're, we're right there. Get to work, then. <laughs>